Hi everyone, I thought it would be fun to have a go at this little picture from Welcome to the Village. This is a Morgan O'Brien book, so it takes a very similar form to his um, Matchstick Mouse books. I have done a flip through of this one. I haven't done many pictures yet because I've been doing quite a lot of Matchstick Mouse. But this one has a sort of pumpkin type theme, so I thought it'd be fun to do it and sort of get it done before Halloween. Um, it isn't really Halloween-y, but it's nice autumnal fun. I thought we would have a go. I'm using my um, Derwent Lightfast pencils. This is the booklet from inside. I've put a set of pencils inside the lid. I have got the 72 set, but with Derwent, the names, the colours go across all brands. So whether you've got Chroma Flow, Artist Studio, or any other Derwent brand, the colours will work, um, be the same. Obviously you don't have to use the same brand at all, but I just thought I haven't used these for a while, so I'd have a go. So let's make a start. What I think I'm going to do is colour in our pumpkins first, and then do some autumnal leaves. Um, I know pumpkin leaves aren't autumnal, but I think it might just be more fun and I'll think about the sky. We've got this little chap and his guitar to do as well but we'll just make a start with the flame. Oh my lamp's not on, hang on. There we go, it makes everything a bit yellow but uh, I think it's better. Um, here is the flame coloured pencil and I'm just going to do a layer over the pumpkin. Now I don't want light fasts are quite vibrant um, normally um, they do um, leave quite a lot of white dots when you colour with them, I find. So, but they work brilliantly with the Derwent blending pencil, which um, shouldn't be a surprise as it's the same brand. But um, I may not worry. Um, I don't always want everything looking now spot on. Now with this pumpkin, it sort of ends here. <sighs> I mean. Are the gr is the greenery coming up over it or should we just take it I'm thinking should we just take a rough guess like that it would sort of continue around like that I think and we'll put our leaves up to there that's what I'm going to do yeah. now I need a darker orange um, I moved to the um, got a Mars orange maybe I'll use that a little bit and we also have, oh, we have a Persian orange. That's really dark. I used the Mars orange first. It's quite a long time since I used these pencils. What I'm going to try and do is make a little bit of shadow at the bottom of our pumpkins to start with. Where the leaves are on the edge, they, it would be a bit darker. Also, um, it's going to be darker at the bottom than the top just because the light is going to be coming from the sky. So just do that a little bit. I find because these are more vibrant, I find it hard to put down a light layer. There we go. I want a little bit on the edge too. As I say, it's a bit dark. I need to just try and be a bit more gentle with it. There we go. I'm sort of ignoring the lines at the minute. I may continue to. I find it's quite nice with these more simple and basic pictures to keep the colouring a bit simple too. But uh, you don't have to. I've seen some really intricately coloured pages from these sorts of books by Morgan O'Brien. Oh, he's got a new book out for Christmas, by the way. I think it's a storybook. Um, it's a Matchstick Mouse book. It's Matchstick Mouse Christmas book. But it's not labelled up as an adult colouring book. We're going to go back in with the flame and just try and blend that in a bit. I'm going to put it over the top of what I've done and just tone it down a tad. It's a bit too stark like that. But I'm not going to take that orange right to the middle. I want to leave a lighter bit in the centre. Like that. Um, yes, yeah, so I've seen it on... Um, Amazon up for sale already. He hasn't 
I knew there was something in the works from his Instagram page because he was indicating there was a new Christmas Matchstick Mouse book. There is a Christmas Matchstick Mouse colouring book, by the way, which um, I have done a review of and I have got and I will be using, but not quite yet. I'm not quite ready for Christmas um, colouring. I'm going to use this yellow. This is the amber gold. Um, there isn't really an orangey yellow. Just to go over that bit. You could leave it a bit whiter. I quite like warming it a little bit. Um, yes, so this is, I think this is a storybook. But as I say, I haven't seen any flip throughs or anything yet. Um, it's only quite new. I'm looking for a brown while I'm talking to you, sorry. Um, I think that one might do. I'm going to use the Van Dyke brown to do this sign. I want it to look wooden. And then we'll move on to the leaves. So, um, no, I haven't seen a flip through yet, um, but I think it looks quite fun. But if I had little ones, I would get it just to read to them and have a fun Christmas story book. We don't have many. We never used to have many Christmas books. I've got The Night Before Christmas and I used to have one other, but I haven't got it anymore. My boys are 17. I still read them The Night Before Christmas. Such fun. But uh, we, uh, we don't do much else. Uh, yeah, that's what I was after. I'm going to use the light bronze just over the top of this. It will uh, just help to burnish it a little bit without uh, making it too dark. It looks a bit greeny. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, so I think it looks cute, but um, as I say, I don't think it's a colouring book because it doesn't say it is on the front, and these all do. And, but he hasn't put anything on his Instagram yet about it. I follow him and Morgan O'Brien on Instagram. So I don't really know much about it. Right, leaves. I am going to start with a burnt sienna, I think. It's really dark, this camera. I don't know, anyway. I'm going to use the burnt sienna to um, do the tips of all the leaves. So where have we got a rounded bit? I'm going to put a bit down and then fade it. So it's quite a simple process, I think, but um, fading evenly isn't simple, but the idea is simple. It just takes a bit of practice. So really it's about layering up a bit more here and then less and then less and then less. And at the same time, you can reduce the pressure that you're putting down on your pencil. Now it's important not to put too much pressure on your pencils particularly if you've got ones that are prone to breaking. Now certain brands are more prone to breaking than others anyway, but also certain colours. Now I don't know whether this is due to the pigments and certain colours or whether I just, it just happens to be that in certain brands there's a pencil that's weak for some reason or another. I don't really know. Now here look, we've got a dark bit. I'm going to colour that in. So um, you need to not put too much pressure on your pencils, particularly ones like this. These are expensive pencils. It seems a little bit odd to use this very expensive brand. I'm just trying to work out what that is. I'm just going to go with it, do like that, um, to um, use your expensive pencils in a cheap sort of Amazon paper book but it's all about fun in the end of the day I just want to enjoy myself show you different materials and things and uh, I have a little excitement I've been looking for my Christmas present from my husband he's like to buy me something um, and uh, I am considering getting Sarah Renee Clark's colour cube I watched someone's video on it the other day and they coloured using one of the colour combos and it was so pretty. And although I don't tend to worry about what colours I'm... That's a bird, isn't it? I just thought that's the top of the... Um, a bit of a bush, but it's not as a bird, I think. Hmm. I haven't decided what colour to do the sky yet. I thought I would do the rest first and see what's going to work. 
that may mm, I'm gonna have to do that as a bush because it's not rubbed out I think it's a bird so if you're um, when you're doing this page you might want to um, leave that and put your put sky in that bit but anyway it's not the end of the world right and my next color I'm going to use this is quite pretty sandstone what we're going to do is we're going to go from orangish to yellow to green um, the idea is I'm going to go over the top of what I've done already and just extend the color down I've done this I do this quite a lot it's quite fun it's easy, relaxed, don't have to worry, we're doing it all the same, so uh, it's simple. And, uh, yeah, I know I go fast, and some of you don't go this fast, but I don't want to go too slow and make it, um, the video sort of go along too slowly. You can pause it and catch up with me if you wish but I try I just naturally do everything fast I am that fast person that has no patience <laughs> and uh, has a huge amount of things that I want to do in a day blah, 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 blah. and so when I'm recording a video I have to force myself to slow down my talking which I do any naturally because I'm concentrating and just take things a little bit more easy. So I actually find the whole process of making videos so relaxing because I have to slow down for you. And uh, it's good. I'm not sure what this is. But I think I'm just, there's a lot of shade, here, shadow here like there was here. I was going to do it with the dark. I'm actually going to go over that with another colour later. So it's very good timing as well. My son's recording a video at the moment. Um, no, he's actually um, live streaming at the moment. So I'm not allowed to talk. So I thought I would just come through and make something instead. I'm going to go with the yellow ochre next. And we're getting... Oh, I'm actually going to go over all of this, which I didn't do just now. I think it warms it nicely. It's not the warmest of yellows. There are warmer yellows. This sort of, um, what's that called? Uh, mustard and the sun yellow are warmer, but I want this to blend more into a green. So I think this tone shade will be better. But yes, I'm thinking of getting the color cube. I think, although I don't have trouble choosing colours. I think it would just be fun to um, have a go and see where it takes me and sort of I could challenge myself to use every one, every every card, which I think would be really good. I mean not like within a week but obviously <laughs> I don't know how many there are but um, I think 150 maybe. I just think it would be really interesting and just, just take my colouring to a different add something different to my colouring. I was going to say to a different level, I think that's a little bit. That indicates it will improve it. I'm not expecting it to necessarily. I think improvement comes from practice. Um, really. I find it interesting talking about improvement. When I was first started colouring, I would watch someone like Emily Illustrator and she was amazing, as she obviously still is. And think, wow, what you know, I've got Stella Ergosov, she colours with polychromos. If I got the polychromos, I could colour like her. So I save up some money and get a few polychromos and slowly extend my polychromo collection. But no, um, I didn't end up colouring like her. I ended up colouring like me with a polychromo. And actually, when I first purchased the polychromos, my colouring went backwards, where I had to relearn because... I was using a pencil I wasn't used to using. So uh, that is the problem with getting new pencils and also just expecting to turn into somebody. You won't. You'll be your own. You don't want to do that anyway. You want to be your own self. This is my favourite green. This is the foliage. Oops. And this is a more yellowy green, I think. I'm actually going to start with it at the bottom. Put, put 
put down quite a bit and then fade it up into that. I find it easier to go that way than to try and apply it lightly first and then darken. There we go. I'm going to put a tad in a few other places too, there and there. Down here, look, we need a bit. I don't, that one looks like it needs a bit of yellow. I'm just going to go over it. There we go. And then, there we go. So where it's pale, just adding a little bit. It's looking a little bit like grass, but I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. I will see how it goes on this bit. I'm going to keep it quite dark here, layer it up. I love it. He's got his, um, he signed and dated it. It says 18, so I assume the book came out in 2018. I'm nosy now. No, it's 2022, but maybe he drew this in 2018 and uh, didn't bring the book out. This one needs some yellow as well. I think I missed a bit of this. Sorry. There we go. I'm not going to put any green on that one. I think it's going to be difficult and it will look a bit odd. So I'm going to leave it. I'm just going to tidy that. There we go. This green is definitely beginning to look a bit grassy. But that's okay. There we go. So the Derwent Blending Pencil is a great little investment and I find it works on every pencil that I've tried it on. So Ergosoft, I don't think I've tried it on Prisma because I've got the Prisma Blending Pencil. But sort of our tasers and castle arts and things like that, it works on them all. So it's a really good little pencil. It can make things look a little yellowy. It seems to deposit a bit of yellow colour. So it's worth being aware of that because if you're going to use it to, let's say, try and blend some blue, a pale blue or a white or something, it might leave an unsightly deposit. Gosh, that sounds a bit weird. But um, so just be aware of that, that it might not, um, you know, look perfect. But on the other hand, it's well worth giving it a go, I would say. I'm going to put green here and here, and then I'm going to actually put darker colour on top. In a minute, I think this will just help it to look a little bit more like it works to ties together. So what I'm actually going to do is grab the Van Dyke brown, which we've used already, and just go over these areas that are marked with the lines that indicate they're shadowy, like that. And then this one. I'm not going to do quite so many layers on this one; just a little bit. So you can still see their shadow there, but too dark. The sun's coming in, it's just hitting me on the shoulder. It's lovely and warm. It's a strangely hot day. I had a hot flush earlier, it's so hot. I didn't know if it was a proper hot flush or whether it's just I'd been outside cleaning the windows and um, doing other jobs, weeding the garden and cleaning the front door and the garage door and things like that. And um, just sitting back having a look and I'm going to fill in any areas that I think need it. I'm going to actually grab the yellow ochre and just go over this and just sort of blend it in nicely. You may not feel you need to do this, you might not want to do it, that's fine. It's just a little extra. So I, um, yeah, and I sat down at my desk I suddenly got really hot and uh, whew, but, uh, it may have just been because I'd been outside and because I've been busy doing chores. It's nice to get some chores done though because uh, I've got um, visitors at the weekend trying to make the house look nice. It's very difficult to make my kitchen look nice when it's not finished. They're coming to see the kitchen, it's not finished. But you know, such is life. Um, I've clean it to the best of my ability and they're going to be fully understanding I'm sure that 
um, that my um, all around every plug socket the um, there's big chips in the wall and hasn't been filled or painted but, uh, and the radiator looks hideous because it um, needs changing for another one so you know my neighbour popped over to see it as well she's off on holiday and she wanted to have a quick look but um, that was nice right I am happy with that now I think it looks very autumnal um, now we have a guitar we have a dog I think he's a dog um, I'm not sure what colour to do him um, I don't think I want to do him brown we've got brown here and here I was wondering about a yellowish colour but we've got quite a lot of what colour is that? Hmm. Maybe we could do him a beige. It would be quite. Hmm. I was thinking of doing him to look a bit like a teddy bear, but let's use this colour. Oops. Let's. I'm going to use the brown ochre. I'm sorry if you can't see. I can't tell what you can see because um, of the weird light. I'm going to use this quite lightly. And if I do a sort of round and round movement, I'm hoping it will look like he's slightly got a slightly furry texture. Especially if I don't cover it with another colour. Because I think he looks like a fluffy teddy bear. <laughs> My son's having a good laugh. It's quite funny. I'm going to do the base of his foot in the same colour. Um, not sure if that it's a good idea but I think it just ties it together because if I go for a darker brown it might sort of blend into the leaves and I don't really want that I want him to stand out a little bit he's got his eyes shut I think it looks like uh, now that's be the top of the guitar won't it not his skin so I don't know whether welcome great pumpkin I don't know if that is a thing from Animal Crossing Really, I'm very naive. Never played. I don't know whether he is a character that needs to be a particular colour. I found out after I'd, I did the other the other pumpkin page from here with the duck, and when I looked up the duck, there seemed to be loads of different ducks in different colours. So I felt like perhaps it didn't matter what colour I'd done mine. That, I asked my kids because they've played Animal Crossing, my boys, and they said they didn't recognise this character. So uh, maybe doing him in this sort of colour doesn't matter. Hmm, I'm going to go over him all over again with the same colour. I think he's just not quite dark enough. This is something I I have begun to improve in my technique since when I first started. When I first started colouring, I would often just colour things with one colour and one layer. And um, I realise quite quickly actually that layering makes quite a difference if you put a second layer on it can make the whole thing look more vibrant and also you can add different colours to your second layer to um, change the shading I'm not going to do that on this one I want to keep him as I say I don't want to shade him too much or else he might blend into the background and uh, I don't want that it's very tempting to do a sort of sunset or something for the background, for the sky, but I don't think I'm going to do that because we've got so much orange and browns going on. And the guitar we've got to do as well, and that for me would be brown. It does, they don't have to be, of course. Um, my son's guitar was... I can't remember, it wasn't brown. But I feel like it should be, so I'm going to grab some darker browns. I'm going to grab go for the natural brown to start with and we'll put some brown down on our guitar now the circular parts I think would be gold or silver I'm trying to think I think my sons were gold but I think if we try and do a gold against all these autumnal colours it probably won't show up I'm going to do the fretboard the same colour as the main guitar and we might keep that edge for a different colour though um, and this bit here 
Um, but I think silver might just stand out a little bit more. Might be what we're looking for. We'll have a look. Now it's a bit darker. There are lines here as if this bit's darker. I'm going to try and lighten it a bit there. I think it will be darker in there. There we go. I'm just going to make it a bit more even. So don't be afraid to have a look and think, well, this bit here is a bit light. I'll just go over that bit. You have to go over all of it. Just go over the bits that look like they need going over a little more. Now, let's see. The out, out a bit, I feel like I'd quite like to do it in um, a sort of sunstone colour. This bit here. And this bit. I think it just adds to the autumnal um, tone of the page. It helps it to stand out a little bit too, I think. There we go. Um, I have missed a few bits. I'm grabbing my natural brown again to just do there a bit better and under here. And I'm going to grab my brown ochre. to do this bit looks quite goldish which is nice and for these bits I said I was going to do a silvery colour I'm actually going to use the cloud grey because I feel that it has a bit of silver in it it actually seems to sparkle a little bit almost like a sort of graphite pencil does. And we use that for all of these little bits. Now we've just got the sky left and I'm thinking I'm going to go blue just because as I said I can't do sunset and I think a pink would look a little bit odd. So I'm going to do a couple of blues. I'm just having a look at what we've got here. Um, my blues are in a strange order. Uh, I think I'll do a little bit of deep blue to start with at the bottom. Quite dark and sort of quickly fade it up like that. Don't want it too thick a layer. We'll be going over it with our next blue anyway, so that will sort of burnish it down a bit. There we go. Um, let's just fade that up a bit more. Okay. okay. We need a more mid blue. Uh, we have actually got a mid blue. Let's try that. Mid blue seventy percent. Just go over the top of all of this, and then just take that colour up a little bit higher, like that. There we go. And now we want to go lighter. Um, I think we'll just go straight for the mid ultramarine. This is our lightest blue, apart from the sort of um, ar Arctic colour, which I might use, I might not. I'm going to use this one quite thickly on top of this bit. And it will blend it, but also um, lay over it and lighten it just slightly. And burnish it all at the same time. 
and then we're going up and lightening it. Oops. Really light at the top. I'm just trying to make it evenish. There we go. And over here. Also building up their colour and getting nearer to the top. Now if you don't like doing this sort of graduated sky, I mean these small pictures are quite good for practicing this sort of technique. But if you're not keen, you could just use a blue pen to get a more even blue, although I find water-based markers quite difficult to get an even colour. Um, I'm just not I'm not very experienced at using them, which I think is the main problem. Um, you could use a um, gel pen or a glitter pen or something like that. Okay. Hmm, do we need a bit of Arctic? I'm not sure. I'm not sure that we do. I think we might be done. I'm just going to grab a dark brown. We've got a chocolate here to do a few bits on here. I want this to look a bit more woody. I'll put a few bits of wood grain in it. And the same with this guitar, just to emphasize, it's got some marks on it already. I just want to put a few more on. They may not even really show up, but there we go. There he is, as I say, I haven't put any shading on, on our actual character. I think he stands out more like that and uh, I think he's it's uh, rather fun with the um, with the sort of autumnal colors so I hope that was okay for you I did have fun I hope um, I hope you did but uh, thank you for watching um, please do subscribe if you haven't already um, it does make a difference to the channel um, as I say, thank you all for watching and happy colouring. Have a lovely, lovely day.